Hello Twitch, hello YouTube, my name is Trendless, most of you know me. <laughs> Today we're gonna do a guide for battleships. Now there is a big difference between multiple battleships. You have American battleships, you have Japanese battleships, you have British battleships, uh, you have German battleships. And all of these BBs have a unique flavor to them. For example, Japanese battleships excel more in longer range combat. Meanwhile, something like the Russian BBs excel at close range. They have like different dispersion formulas. You get you get more consistent the further you are away or the closer you are. Or you have the Americans who are like kind of a jack of all trades. And the Germans obviously for brawling. But it doesn't change the fact that in general, when it comes to BBs, there's two to three rules you wanna you wanna pretty much utilize. You are the class with the most HP pool. You're also the class which has one of the most devastating salvos in the game with the main guns that can delete existences of other BBs and cruisers. Against the DDs not so much, but that's pretty much your natural counter. BBs are all about trading your, your HP wisely, defending or attacking depending on the depending on how the outcome of the battle, what is more suited right now. You don't want to do go in and do with your like the rules I'm saying now is you don't want to be the guy who starts the game and rushes instantly in. You need to find the balance, uh, the balance, balance, my god, that was German, uh, the balance between not rushing in and being completely on the campy side. Because whenever I play World of Warships, I see a lot of BB players either getting killed in the first four minutes because they ridiculously want to, especially German BB players and Russian BBs, who tend to be up closer anyway, uh, they tend to YOLO a lot and just throw away the ship because they're like, oh, my secondaries needs to go. But no, that's not the point. BBs are pretty much a hammer that can break a flank, but you need to utilize it in the right moment. You need to analyze the battle. And then you need, need to check when is there an opportunity for a breakthrough, when should you rather defend. And this always depends on how much backup do you have, what is your opponent, and the positioning. Because BBs are really good at punishing mistakes. Yeah, you have occasionally the RNG that kicks in. But generally, if you are for example in a Minotaur, and you see a Yamato at like 15-16 cam, and you show a complete broadside to him to to him the whole time and he sees you then your life is most likely your ship, your ship is going to disappear most likely in the next minute if it's not one salvo then it's going to be two salvos you cannot always get away with it so you got to be really careful what to do when to do against battleships and when you play them your, your most your biggest objective is pretty much get those juicy broadsides smash the enemies use your hp wisely again don't yolo in but don't be completely in the back either you really want to find the middle ground and you want like you also want to use your hp it's not like you don't want to get hit at all no you want to use your hp you have the most hp in the game of any class and that is there for a reason you also have the most armor if we include things like napoli and some <laughs> and petro Pavlos, which are kind of dented as a cruiser but you pretty much want to use your HP for your team. You you're kind of like a damage sponge as well. Not only can you pump out a lot of damage, but you also want to take it for your team. Because every cruiser player is going to be thankful to you. If you, for example, if a Demon player is next to you, he's going to be thankful if you take the damage from him because he will not be able to sustain it long. But on a long time, the longer the Demon lives next to you, he can pump out the same damage with his DPM. Now, before we go into the battle, and I'm actually showing you positioning and so on, we're going to go over uh, re really quickly over a BB build. Generally, you want to build BBs for survivability, aka you want to build a tank build. There is some exception, it's like the Schlieffen line with the Germans, which have absolutely amazing secondaries, where you really want to go with secondaries. You want to go secondaries. But in general, you want to go... In, in, when you play a battleship with a survivability build. That means, for example, I'm taking the Shikishima now 
it's with Yama pretty much the same and with a Monty would be pretty much the same as well. What you would probably what you want to do is you want to you want to strengthen your main strength. And in that case, that is your main gun, which means you will go with better main gun accuracy on the third slot and depending again on tier 9 and 8 at tier 9 and 10 you get this slot, you want to go reload time for the main guns. 48 and lower depending on how many you have you want to then go always concealment because concealment can can rescue you quite a lot of times now if there's a cv concealment is not that much of importance but first of all there is still a lot of games without cvs and even then it's very nice because the better your concealment is the closer you can narrow down an opponent's position you see a last spotted daring on your flank you're not spotted though on open water you know he's gone a bit further away. You are spotted? Okay, he's pretty close to my right side then. Or my left flank, wherever he is. Um, And you can narrow down the area way easier. Me meanwhile, I see a lot of BB players who don't build into concealment at all. And then you have... Yeah, you have a Yamato player with like 17.5 km concealment. Yeah, good luck finding where the opponent could be if he has never been spotted. And you cannot judge anything from the position. So build into concealment. Damage control system makes your firing extinguish time go down, your flooding recovery, which means if you don't have a damage con ready, you will survive longer, you will take less damage because it's less time, the, the burns will be lasting shorter. Also damage control system 1 to lower your chance of catching a fire, risk of flooding as well. And then here, depending on which ship, main armaments 1, because main guns are in the Shigishima's case the bread and butter of the ship. For a Schlieffen, you could think about going with the secondary survivability. Moving on to the captain skills. Again, this the the general idea. There's there's multiple options which you can go here. Usually, I'm gonna be very fast here. Usually, I take gun feed on battleships. Why? Because a lot of PBs. You kind of want to, in some situations, you just want to switch to HE or fast to AP, depending what you play. Now, Yamato, for me, kind of Yamato and Chikishima, and to an extent, incomparable, you could argue, are an exception, because you pretty much exclusively will shoot a AP with them. Simply because they have that 32mm overmatch, which means you guys gonna absolutely smash people with AP. This is why I don't have it here, but generally, if you play BB, gun feeder is very much recommended. I like having priority target, because it will give you a good idea of when somebody's, for example, launch, how many people target you, first of all. But secondly, if you know a DD is nearby, and he targets you, you will have a plus one. If he switches to the torpedoes, the plus one will disappear for a short second. And then it will come back. And this is very good to roughly guess when a destroyer is launching torpedoes at you. Now, of course, there could be the troll that switches there, then doesn't launch them, and or switches back and forth and so on. But in general, it gives you a really good idea when torps are to be expected if you know the rough location of a DD. Freeze of Gears, aka I think it was called Expert Marksman back in the day, before the Captain work. It will improve your turret traverse. Now, this is Again, a skill you don't need to take on every BB. This skill you pretty much want to take on every BB that has bad turret traverse. Kremlin, Ohio, um, and uh, this also counts for lower tiers, by the way. Kremlin, Ohio, and some other BBs who tend to have very good turret traverse, like I think 30 seconds base, you don't need Grease of Gears. You really can save the two points. Use them somewhere else. Because the turrets are really fast. In case of Shikishima now, they're very slow. So I'll definitely take it here. Brisk is something you can take. You don't need to take it. I love yeah. running it on most of my BBs. Because when you're not detected, you have a 10% faster speed. This helps immensely to reposition yourself. And a lot of times... It's not unrealistic. A lot of times you will be not spotted between your volleys. Because remember, the, the general cooldown on fire bloom, like shooting bloom, or yeah, the shooting bloom, is 20 seconds. 
most PBs lo reload longer than 20 seconds. That means you have a time where you will always go dark, unless somebody is, of course, near the detection range. And in ships like Yamato, Vermont Line, and all those who excel a bit more at longer range combat, it's really great and it helps you to reposition and make your ship faster. It's also great for ships who are in general fast to reposition, such as Rhode Island, for example. You can go 42 knots, I think, which is really, really fast. AR, an absolute must-have. This is probably the skill I take on every ship in the game. Every ship in the game that I have has AR on it. It generally means just... You will, your secondaries... Oh, AA is actually buffed as well, I didn't even know that, crazy. But what it basically means, the more damage you take, you get better reload. And you will never really have, or optimally... I mean, optimally, you could say you have always full HP as a BB. Uh, but you will never have, usually, full, full HP in a battleship. And it really helps you to get faster reloads off and faster damage output. And generally, it's optimal when you are like half HP-ish or so. You have like pretty much a flat 10% reload buff, which is insane. And it's such an amazing skill. Now, of course, it doesn't help you if you're dead, <laughs> but then no skill really helps you. Um, moving on to the next one. Basics of survivability. Now, I know a lot of people... It, it really depends on your playstyle, but a lot of people, if they say go for a survivability build, they will say go concealment, go fire prevention, and go an additional heal. And this additional heal also gives you longer repair party consumable action time. I personally, for me, this is for me. I personally rather burn um, burn shorter and flood shorter instead of having an additional heal. Because depending on the ships, I never really use all the heals. I always have most of the time one heal left. And that's why I don't really like to use it. Now, it's a good skill. You can go for it. A lot of people will recommend you rather going for this than instead of this. And then you drop something else here. Uh, but I just prefer this one. I'm not really the biggest fan of the extra heal. Like for example, with the Yama here, with my with my um, with my Shikishima, I have I have four heals right now. Four heals. That's a lot of healing capacity. Sure, you could have a fifth one, but I could also argue when Yamamoto goes for first blood, I get another one. Anyway, four heals is more enough for me. Concealment, as I mentioned, really important. And now to one of the most important skills on battleships. And I see a lot of people, and by a lot, I mean literally 80% of the player base is not taking this skill. And I can really not understand it. This is by far one of the most important skills if you play battleships. And build a tank build, which you do in 90% of the time. Not only does it reduce 10% flat out the risk of catching fire, it also reduces the number of fires by one. Which means you can only burn... I want to show it to you with Shikishima here quick. So, a battleship usually has four sections where it can burn. Back, front, and two in the superstructure. So far okay, right? Now, if you, if you use fire prevention, you will have only one in the back, front, and in the entire middle part. Now you would think, okay, you burn, we have one less fire and so on. Why is it such a big difference? It has one really vital and important advantage that people always oversee. If an enemy destroyer farms you, let's say whatever DD in the game, it doesn't need to be to 10. It doesn't really matter. Whatever DD is, is farming you, where do the DD players most of the time shoot? The superstructure. Even if they land, if, even if they get a fire on you, they will most likely keep shooting on the superstructure in your battleship simply because you will da do damage here and have the fire chance. If they have a fire here, they usually tend to shoot here. N barely any DD player in the game will go to the front or back of your ship simply because most of the DD guns cannot pen it and they will just shatter. They will not go for the flat up never fire. And this is why this is even a bigger buff, because most people tend to shoot always the superstructure, like literally the middle part of your ship. And if you have two, you can only have one fire there instead of two. 
that is the biggest advantage over it that people tend to forget because you literally see people and i do it myself because you want to have that extra damage most of the time you shoot always into the superstructure because a dd player just loves having flat out more damage next to its fires than instead of relying trying to set another fire on the front where he will just chatter with his guns this is the really important thing why you should take fire prevention and it's it's one of the biggest upsides that people tend to forget it's not only that you have one less fire but Usually people just shoot you in the middle part because that's why they can damage you with their guns the smaller cruisers and DDs That's the thing and It's really hurting my heart seeing a lot of BB players not running it because it's such a good thing and now we're gonna hop in and we're gonna Show a bit of the positioning and so on with the in this case the Shikishima now, but it pretty much You can play it pretty similar with most BBs Unless it's really like a super uprange close one or a secondary focus chip. But I hope you understand now why fire prevention is so important. It has so it has even upsides that you don't really realize at the beginning. And that's the thing. Which doesn't show you flat out on the skill pattern. Oh, we have a CV, okay. And we have two submarines, two DDs. Still pretty decent. Okay. Good. Now, first of all, we look at the map. I'm gonna put a bit of music on so it's not gonna be too silent here, but a bit more relaxing. One second. Good. So, first of all, look at the minimap. How many battleships do we have? We have four BBs. We are very flexible what we can do now. We have one BB on the left flank, we have one BB on the right flank. And we have two in the middle. Now I can see what my Bismarck player is gonna do if he if he wants to stay in the middle more or more left or right focused. I personally will position myself between A and B for now, seeing how the battle develops. I can support at A, but I can also crossfire towards B. Okay, maybe my Bismarck player is not moving at all, but <laughs> uh yeah. We'll see about that. Good. Now I'm gonna analyze what are we what are we fighting here? We have a CV. That's the only thing you cannot really influence too much. If he wants to grief you, he will grief you. That's something you just cannot really influence, unfortunately. But that's the class by design. We have a lot of secondary related ships here. Or we have more close range ships here, Schlieffen and GK. Amaki more long range combat. Mecklenburg usually also more long range focused. But people will tend to brawl with it as well, which is very questionable. Submarines. We have two DDs, we gotta be a bit careful. We know a submarine launched on each flank, because one submarine spawned here, one here. That means both flanks have subs. What you can do at the beginning now is, you can think about going for little crossfires. Like for example, launching your spotter plane. And going for the tipper, which turned away. Hopefully it's not paying attention or not overturning and then we might get our first smash already. Again, so far the battle is not really developed too much. Okay, we're gonna miss it. He turned completely. Fine. And now we're gonna see Hello there. what else is here. Is fire prevention also for secondary build to K? Well, Personally, I wouldn't build a GK into secondaries, in all honesty, but that's just preferential. Good. If possible, we want to focus the you want to focus the DD player uh, as long as he's not too far away. There's no point really as a battleship. To shoot, I think we can hit that submarine before it's at 50 meters. I'm not sure. Uh, there's no point as a BB to shoot really at a DD that's like 18 km away. The chance that you really hit him, unless you have nothing better to shoot, is very minimal. But if you support your team here, you can go for the, for example, the Hayate if it's like f up to like 14, 15 km. You definitely want to focus the DD. Unless. You see a cruiser or a battleship going full broadside in the back and you want to punish them. Like for example, this Mecklenburg is running away now. 
showing full broadside and we're gonna utilize on it. At the same time I paid attention to the minimap and see Haku tries to drop something on me. Not really a good hit to be honest, but hey. Amagi is not looking at me, okay. I'm gonna slow down here, we're gonna eat one torpedo unfortunately. I'm damage conning this because it's a flooding. You don't usually want to damage con a single fire as well. Because the single fi fires are healable damage, same as floodings. The difference with a flood is you just take up way more damage than one single fire. Yeah, no flood, okay, we got kind of lucky here. Yeah. But that's what I mean, the CV can really influence your game. And you can't really do too much about it. Now, enemy team is running away here. We have a pretty big force here to be dragging with. But that doesn't mean, and I'm not joking, that doesn't mean you should overextend now. Because kiting ships have always the advantage over pushing ships. You can just react way easier to your opponent. And we have A cap, so we can just play it pretty safe now. We don't need to risk it too much. We can rather think about focusing down this low HP Amagi and maybe getting B objective as well. There is no reason for us to really push at A now. Simply for the fact is, they are in a way better position now if we keep pushing and they really want it. Like that's the entire idea, entire idea here right now is they want that we chase them and they can pick us one by one. But what we gonna do or what the team should do right now is just defend the objective and not overcommit. A lot of people tend to like keep pushing now and you're gonna be in a very rough spot then. Because again, when ships are kiting away they have a way better position than initial position than you and now we're just gonna play it safe for now it might not be the most damaging like damage game now sometimes you can't influence that really but we're not gonna lose the battle and that's the important part in this case surely sure if the game would be nearly over now and you have like we have like a 900 points lead and like 7 ships. Then you could think about just going in. But usually don't throw away your ship. Don't throw your ship, ship for no reason. Really don't. Now Kremlin is here. I'm gonna move. And also the Bismarck and Preussen are coming up. I'm gonna move a bit over here. So we can like create some sort of crossfire here. Also I'm gonna try to shoot that gay... Oh. That gamer is dark now, okay. Chima is capping B, we're gonna support him. We also need to watch out now. We can also position ourselves here. Because the C flank is about to fall. And I'm gonna turn down here because potential Hayate Torps. Always pay attention to the minimap of last po spotted position of the enemy team and so on. Don't forget to read the minimap as well because a lot of people suddenly get surprised. Ooh, who's this? What is this now? And that was a poor dispersion on the GK though. And see, here, people are committing too, way too much over. They're, they're way too much in the front and they cannot disengage anymore. And now they get farmed one by one. This is the biggest problem. The Des Moines player also, he's gonna end up in a crossfire here. It's not a good idea. He will get, he will be sure soon in a spot of no return, how I like to call it. It's a spot where you like... Pretty much effed up, and now it's just praying time that RNG saves you. Also, if possible, try to focus now on low HP targets or broadsides. Depending on the situation, of course. And of course, one of the that should be pretty much one of the most mandatory things in the game, angling. Don't show broadside at times if you can deny it. 
Now I gotta watch out. I have the GK in my crossfire here right now. But he is he's running away fully. So he's not the biggest danger for now. Meanwhile, this guy shows full broadside now to me. And hopefully, I mean, hopefully we can punish it. Really depends on G as well, but he did make a massive mistake here. He's trying to turn, but we should still get plants at least. And there we go. Nearly 20k. Still a good salvo. I'm gonna slow down a bit here. We don't want to end up in the secondary range. Which we are right now, but he's barely in it. So if we slow down, we're gonna be out of it again. And I'm also gonna try to finish off that low HP hipper. It's just a hipper, but you just really don't wanna... Oh. Nice. Well done. You don't wanna have... Somebody who is easily to be found there alive farming you. I'm gonna turn down now. Ooh, Aki. I'm gonna turn down now. He can shoot my side. That's a risk I'm gonna take. But we really wanna finish off that DD. Nice. Good. Shima got both. Nice. Very good. That Shima is gonna get a compliment. And now we have only a submarine in our flank left. Oh, there he is. Perfect. He even got caught. Oh wow, that was that, that was a re that was a really bad drop by me. I'm sorry. That was a really bad drop by me. I pressed too fast. Nice. We still got a hit though. That's good. Very good. Two hits. I know already now where the submarine is. That means every enemy ship is in this square. Nobody can be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many ships are light? Eight. Okay, the CV can be there, but even he is here, judging by the plane's position. So we can now try to, like, pretty much put them into this corner and get the map control. We are low on ships, though. That's our biggest downside right now. So we really need to try to finish off some targets. That's our biggest downside now. The upside is, a lot of the opponents are pretty low right now. Such as the Mecklenburg and the Napoli. Ow. Bombers are really annoying, but we got the Napoli. Very good. Mecklenburg is also down. And look, suddenly, it didn't look so good at the beginning the match, but suddenly we are at a 5 versus 5. We also know the submarine is on 60, 30 meters death or 60, because we're not spotted. Otherwise, if you would be on periscope death, we would see, uh, we would be spotted right now. Again, now don't show too much broadside. I don't want to overcommit completely. I kind of want to slow a bit down because, in the case of Shikishima or in the Japanese BBs, you have better dispersion on further ranges, or not more, not better but more consistent. Plus, if the GK comes too close and he is actually secondary built, it's just gonna be additional damage that we don't need. The harassment of the CV is a bit annoying. Oh, I think the submarine is too close. I think the submarine player is actually too close. Those tops, tops shouldn't arm completely. Oh, did they? Oh, they did. Okay. That means he is not that close, actually. I'm gonna be the damage sponge for our team right now. Gonna hurt a bit, but we gotta be it. We gotta do it. Might be missed. These ones shouldn't arm either. Yeah. 
He's very, very close. There's also a submarine here, though. We gotta watch out. The U has done one terrible mistake now. We know he's in like free in the free cam vicinity, and if he doesn't have a lot of battery left, he will be forced out. Okay, there we go. We're gonna turn here. We don't want to show broadside to the GK. GK is still the most dangerous opponent for me in this game. And we got the submarine, nice. Potachi also got killed by the Malta, very good. Angling against GK. Slowing down here. So we can still punish him. He's gonna show broadside now, very good. I'm gonna damage con this fire simply because there is nobody really spamming with HG right now. Usually, and I'm quite low. Usually, you don't want to damage con a single fire just like this. And now it's a uh, 4 versus 2. Nice. I'm gonna beach here and I'm gonna reverse. And we're gonna get ready for the CV shots. Because this, we're not gonna realistically shoot the submarine right now. And see, we used our HP. At the beginning, we played a bit more conservative to adjust to the battle situation. But when needed, we used our HP. And now to this piece of garbage there in the back, just wanking and playing like a coward. Now the problem is he has really thick deck armor, which we can't really do anything about, so I have to get a lucky punch here at the side. Or front. I'm not gonna add for, uh, aim for the superstructure, because that's an even smaller target. There was the deck armor that I meant. Look, four ricochets. I really hate that, the especially the 10 CVs. I mean, the lower ones, most of them don't have it. But that the 10 CVs have that thick deck armor. Now it's gonna go forward again, right? Oh no, he stopped. You gotta pay attention to that ping. The submarine is still somewhere here. I don't even think I have enough pen with HG on his deck. Can we get him? No. Oh well. Four kills. GG. 163k damage. And a win. Uh, 163k uh, damage. 32 planes. We did cost the CV quite some planes. That's nice. Four kills. We got the submarine as well. First in the team. I'm gonna compliment the, Ch compliment the Chima because he played very well on that flank. And we soaked up quite some damage. Look, this is what I mean also with a tank build and using your HP kind of smart. We received over 100k damage. 104k damage and we had like... How much did we have left? Like 20, uh, 36k or something at the beginning. I'm not sure. So we nearly doubled our actual HP with the usage of heals. And damage cons and so on. Damaged a lot of different opponents. And GG. I hope this gave you kind of an idea. Um, how to play with a BB. What to, how to build BBs. Like what builds to use for BBs. How to position. And the last tips I can give you right now is. Always pay attention to the minimap. Where are you needed the most? Where are you right now? Is there any threat around you? Is there a destroyer to your left or right flank? Is there somebody close to you? Where could you position yourself to punish other opponents? And then you will have success with BBs. And remember, stay angled out your trendless. If you like the video, 
Be sure to sub to the YouTube channel, it would really mean a lot to me. And join us on Twitch over and have a great day. Bye bye.